it's my pleasure to kick off this gentle and general introduction to uh, the OpenStreetMap project. Um, if you stumbled into this conference and are absolutely brand spanking new to OpenStreetMap, I'm hoping that this is the right place for you. And uh, even if you're not new to OpenStreetMap, I'm still hoping that this is the right place for you and that you may learn a couple things or two about um, OpenStreetMap here. So uh, today's focus, I have a big subject here and I decided to, and I only have five minutes of time, so I decided to boil it down to the three most important things about OpenStreetMap, at least that I could think about. Those are the community, the open mapping workflow, and lastly, the uh, open uh, OpenStreetMap ecosystem. Um, here's my obligatory slide about what OpenStreetMap is. I think the important thing to note here is that it is a crowdsourced map, and so that anyone can edit the map and use the content. And I know it's getting tired, uh, but the cliche about uh, OpenStreetMap being the Wikipedia for maps still holds true because um, it happens to be, I guess, the best um, explanation that I can give to my mom about what OpenStreetMap is. But the most important thing, I think, is that last bullet there, that it's a publicly available source of map data. It may be the only publicly available source of map data. And the point I want to emphasize here is that it's invaluable public good um, for that reason. And let's talk specifically about the community. I think it's easy when you think about the OpenStreetMap community to think about those first three at the top row there and perhaps the humanitarian groups in it. Um, as well, but you know the contributors, the geodata consumers, as well as the developers. But you know, there's a whole raft of uh, like teachers and students, and uh, a lot of recreational and civic users, bike riders, trail people um, who use OpenStreetMap, and not to mention a growing contingent of corporate mappers. Um, when we zero in on the OpenStreetMap uh, community itself, OpenStreetMap US community. Um, we have uh, the mappers, of course, and I'm using um, Jennings uh, Anderson's classifications here for mappers that can kind of be divided into two broad categories, paid and, and unpaid mappers. But you notice we also have a whole lot of other uh, contributors to this project to keep it afloat. There's a staff and executive director, of course, the board, and then we have all of these operations and developers, working groups and charters, and they all kind of contribute to, they're all considered contributors to this project. How big is this project? Um, that's pushing, I guess, 7 billion nodes. We have about 7,500,000 uh, registered users. Of course, not all of them map. Here's an astonishing chart, another one from Jennings Anderson here that shows the growth in corporate mappers since 2018. We now have about 3,000, at least, well, about 3,000 corporate mappers in here who are uh, providing an increasingly uh, large uh, contributions uh, to the OpenStreetMap database. So that's community. Let's focus a little bit on the OpenStreetMap working, uh, you know, mapping workflow of which there are three. Uh, back in the olden days, uh, when uh, back in 2004, when the project was first launched, we, uh, you know, we typically relied on like a Garmin eTrex in the field to kind of GPS locations for things um, that we do, and we still use this field method in a lot of places where we um, we have a lot better um, tools now than we did back in 2004. But we we still rely on field work to do a lot of a lot of uh, mapping. Um, since 2010, when Bing licensed their imagery for availability to the OpenStreetMap project, um, we've re increasingly relied on the armchair workflow, which digitizes um, from satellite imagery. And if you attend a Mapathon, you're likely to use this armchair method. And in the last couple of years, we've seen the emergence of machine learning and artificial intelligence to augment mapping. Um, which typically, uh, you know, looks at satellite data and tries to figure out uh, what features, you know, linear features for roads and and blocky images for uh, buildings and 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 predict where those features are. And um, one of these efforts you can see with Map with AI, which I encourage you to take a look at. So kind of each successive workflow builds on the previous successes of the other. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to gloss over a little bit of some of these slides here about the OpenStreetMap um, ecosystem of tools. 
I do want to point out though that I do think that the tasking manager is the best thing since sliced bread and it's probably the linchpin of all of these tools in here. There's numerous applications here and just a smattering here of, of some of these applications that build on top of, uh, of OpenStreetMap, the Strava heat map, access map IO for things like uh, for wheelchair and mobility. And one of my perennial favorites for the last year has been health sites IO and being able to uh, map in OpenStreetMap and add health sites to OpenStreetMap. There's a growing commercial institutional inst uh, in, uh, ecosystem as well. And I don't want to do on this too much, but what I do want to focus on here is the governance ecosystem, which has grown in importance with the um, use, I mean, with the uh, advent of corporate mappers, there's been uh, an, an, there's been a renewed or, or an increasing emphasis on uh, policies around uh, how to edit, how to access tiles, usage of data and things like this. And the OpenStreetMap Foundation maintains this trademark and this license and also working groups, which carry out a lot of the important work of, of keeping OpenStreetMap working. Those include like the data working group, which maintains data quality and uh, adjudicates edit wars and things like that. The license working group, and of course the um, local chapters working group, which um, Increasingly, local chapters represent the interests of their country around the world, and it's an effective way for the foundation to extend governance into, um, into regional areas worldwide. So I want to wrap up. Um, this is my last slide here, but I want to um, point out to four um, big kind of conclusions here that talk about the impact of OpenStreetMap that it's had. First of all, um, the market valuation. Um, OpenStreetMap is worth a hell of a lot of money. And I think the um, the push by corporate mappers, it, at least my guess is that the push by corporate mappers to contribute to OpenStreetMap um, represents both a cost imperative in terms of mapping and also a way to, uh, you know, get an edge on their competitors. Um, that's not to uh, overlook a lot of the socioeconomic benefits. Um, for many small countries around the world, um, OpenStreetMap is the default map, and that yields a whole lot of uh, socioeconomic benefits. I'm thinking specifically of places like um, like St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which um, where OpenStreetMap has become the de facto national map. And uh, because of its availability and its license, and it's been of a measurable value for them uh, during the um, Soufriere's volcano explosion in the last couple months. Social capital, in terms of social capital, um, it's the OpenStreetMap project has proved uh, very dynamic in terms of engaging people of all stripes in mapping their communities and collaborating at great distances remotely to map things like railroads, for example, or for you know health sites, for example, mapping those. So it's been a great uh, it's been a great tool for, to develop a lot of social capital. Spatial citizenship. Lastly, uh, specific engagement uh, is you know by engaging through mapping, you are engaging through uh, as a citizen spatially. So thank you very much, and uh, on with the rest of the conference. I appreciate it very much.